everyone, it's Ivory, and thank you so much for watching Astral Ivory. Today, I'm going to be talking about that time I was choked by a ghost. And, um, you know, I know that sounds super creepy, but um, there's there was actually a really great lesson that I learned um, at the end of this whole, <laughs> this whole experience, and I want to share it with you guys. And so I'll go ahead and start from the beginning. Um, a few years ago, for about six months straight, every other day I had experienced sleep paralysis. And so um, when I was in sleep paralysis, what would happen is, you know, I would of course be asleep and then I would feel this gigantic weight just land on top of me. And then of course, um, you know, I wake up, but my body is frozen and I can't move, I can't scream. Um, it's just my mind that's just going crazy and screaming for help. And, um, and there's a lot of types of sleep paralysis, but in my case, um, this actually did deal with a ghost. And, um, and so what ended up happening was um, whenever um, I did have that weight on me, I would actually feel my eyes being used and I could literally... Um, I could literally feel the ghost trying to take over my body, but it was never fully successful. And I, I do attribute that to my guides and my angels. Um, but I did feel it doing this with my eyes and I couldn't really do anything about it. And, um, and to know that something unknown takes over your body like that gives you this intense powerless feeling and i hated that and i was and um you know after this whole experience i was like i never want to feel that again and um anyway i digress so going back um this entity would also show me images of loved ones being killed of my dog being sliced up of of and then would actually make me feel gushes of wind just going through my body and um, these bat-like creatures flying around me and and um, having like these weird, um, these, these people would be in the corner of my room and they'd just be giggling at me. And it was, it was horrible. And um, one day, the last straw was I was dreaming and then in that dream, I was inside a plane and then um, okay, so I was dreaming and then in that dream I was inside a plane and I was in the cargo deck and so um, I noticed that I was being choked in my dream and it was actually choking me so much to the point where it's dragging me into the back seat and that's where you know that that and that's where that thing um, whatever was dragging me was and so I, I woke up and then um, when I woke up I realized I was still being choked and that's when I realized, okay, now my life is at stake here. And I asked my guides for help. I asked my angels for help. I asked my higher self. I asked any loved ones that had passed over for help as well. And within 30 seconds, um, the choking had dissipated. And then um, from there, it had stopped completely. But then at that point, I was like, I have to do something now. Because now my life is at stake. This can no longer continue. So... Um, I was actually, I had spoke to some friends about it and then I was actually introduced to Amber and then um, from there, um, she was able to bring in the ghost and she asked me from there, she's like, how do you know that this ghost is a negative being? And I was, and I told her, I was like, well, it showed me, it showed my loved ones being killed, my dog being sliced up, it choked me. And then she said, but what you were experiencing was actually this ghost reflecting his state of mind to you and I was like oh he's a he I didn't even know he was a he and she said yes he's a he and the reason that you were choked was because that's actually how he was killed he was showing you how he was killed and I was like wow and I'm thinking what a way to connect with someone and ask for help you know and so um you know I realized at that point you know this was a cry for help but um, Amber had also told me that the ghost didn't even know he was dead until that very moment. And so he had experienced his own epiphany at that point. And he just literally could not believe he was killed by being choked. And 
what was interesting was that there was actually a guy in my life at the time and then he had told me um if you let this guy in even more this guy will bring you and i don't want to name names so i'm just gonna say this guy this guy will bring you the same amount of chaos that i have brought into your life and i told him he's looking out for me and then she said yeah he is he's not a negative being um you know, quote unquote negative, you know? And so, um, and so I asked her, I was like, well, what can I do to help him? And then she said, when you get home, take him to the light, help him get to the light, help him cross over. And I said, okay, I can do that. So I go to my garage. I tell him to meet me in the garage and I say, okay, I have a talk with him in the dark and I'm like, I need my peace. You need your peace. You need to find your happiness. You have to go. And so um, I basically did a meditation and I protected myself as much as I knew how at that time. And I, I basically took his hand and I told him, I'm going to walk with you to the light. And once we get right to it, you're going to head, you're going to go ahead and go through. And I was like, you need to find your peace. You need to find your happiness. You must go. And so off we went. We get to the light. I see him walk right through. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I do this again for the next 30 days just to make sure that, you know, all my T's were crossed, all my I's were dotted, and, you know, we were we were good to go and that he wasn't coming back. And so... um that's what I did. And he actually never came back until one day I had another reading with Amber and, um, he actually come through and he had thanked me. Um, he had thanked me for helping him cross over and that uh, he was going through schooling and, you know, a type of life review and that, you know, he, he was happily crossed over. And so, you know, that, that made me feel just so good that I could actually help, um, someone in need cross over. And, and for me, I, I still think of them as someone, even though they're ghosts, even though they're spirits, they're still beings. You know, you take all of our skin off, we're all the same underneath. So, you know, that's how I feel. He's, he's still another being, just like I'm another being, just like you're another being. So, um, so basically, um, I just wanted to say, never judge a book by its cover. Um, if this is your situation, um, I highly recommend speaking to a medium, a really, really good medium and, and make sure, and, um, and just get the whole, get the whole truth because, you know, people will go through drastic measures to get away from hauntings, to get away from a ghost bugging them, tormenting them. They'll move, you know, they'll, <laughs> they'll move, they'll, they'll burn things. And sometimes all you have to do is just help. And not saying that you have to help everyone that comes your way. But if you're ever in a case like this, I would, I would highly recommend helping the spirit instead of moving and, and changing your entire life out of fear. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and end this with that. And we're actually going to go ahead and bring in Amber right now. And we're going to do some channeling and um, we're actually going to see what comes through today. It will be related to what experience that I just told you right now, but um, we're actually just going to play this by ear. So alrighty, I will see you in just a bit. Thanks for watching. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and get into our channeling portion. And once again, I do want to welcome back the amazing medium, Amber Amrine. Amber, how are you today? Good, how are you? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and bring in um, the ghost um, that had choked me that has now transformed into a much better soul. Um, I don't know if we, he wants to give a name, but maybe we could just call him something. He know. wants to be anonymous. Anonymous, right. okay. We'll call I think him. he'll come up with one. Okay. <laughs> cool. It's the time passage. Sure. He's better now. Like he, he doesn't feel like that, like the same... Um, the same pain that he was going through anymore and all the confusion, has that washed away or is that still lingering? Yeah, no, absolutely. And he's coming through now and he apologizes for <laughs> being a little bit uh, standoffish. Because <laughs> he was like, I don't know, I felt like he was in like a, 
you know, like, old detective movies that's, like, black and white and they have their hat and they're just, like, staring you know? That's what it felt like. And he was a little bit cold. Um, and now that we're connecting more, it's very warm. He has so much energy to him, and it's basically, like, that is the state he was at right now, and that's the part of him that he was trying to, um, kind of get past, you know? So we kind of just caught him in that state. Um, so he apologizes, but no, he's great, and he's happy, and he is appreciative, and... All right. it's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, okay, and so why did you choose me? Um, it kind of had to do with a lot of things. It had to do with the location. <clears throat> um, it had to do with uh, basically who you are in general. I feel like there is some sort of uh, there's a of history, but it's not like you guys had a past life together. It's more like some like weird parallel plane that happened. I think that has to do with the location, though. How it's kind of like you were living in this time, but he was in a different time, and those those kind of uh, connected, you know, which is why he was like, why can't anybody hear me? You know, because where he was is not necessarily real. It was just kind of like his subconscious replaying. You know what I'm saying? Um, because so. Due to the location, um, and because of your, I guess, your abilities and your energy, you know, he's able to see you and connect you. Gotcha. Yeah, that was an interesting six months there, buddy. <laughs> so, um, when you were, because basically what you were showing me is like you were basically killing loved ones. You sliced up my dog. You had gushes of air coming through me. You had bat-like creatures flying around me. So, I mean, it's all good now. <laughs> but... <laughs> But, like, back then, like, what were you thinking when you were doing that to me? It was basically to get your attention. Um, Got my attention. He did help, and he was desperate, and, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's no better way to get somebody's attention. <laughs> yeah. But it's very abnormal. It's not like a, I don't know, it's just something crazy. Granted, he could have picked something a little bit more positive, but he felt like that would have been more effective at getting uh, getting you to notice quicker. And it got you Amber, because I think if it was something more angelic, I'd have been like, oh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? If you want to answer this, um, how did it feel like to die? He said it wasn't necessarily painless. But at the same time, it was very freeing. There was, like, a sensation of both pain and the absence of pain. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a transitional period where you just kind of are letting go and you're just floating, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's very beautiful. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, when you were being choked and then you realized it was kind of your last second of life I mean how did that feel was that where you felt free I feel like he was kind of expecting it deep down you know um it was hard for him to accept it because there's a lot that he wasn't able to accomplish and there's a lot that he wanted to change and turn around that he couldn't um but overall it was kind of like once it started he just welcomed it you know what I'm saying um he didn't fight being choked. Like, it wasn't as traumatic as you would think it would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, so, did you put me in sleep paralysis? Were you the one that made me get paralyzed, like, every other day? He holds a certain position. It's in some kind of, like, weird angelic, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Some, like, bird, like, angel wow. creature. Um, awesome. And he decided to kind of expand on everything by having the human experience and wanted to just kind of start at zero and just work his way back up, you know? He did have a lot of, like, uh, basically meetings with various entities and stuff. Um, and he... When he passed, you know, since he knows a lot of people, you know, he was able to get people to help him. Um, I feel like the purpose of the sleep paralysis, though, I feel like it was a dual purpose. Um, it was some kind of, like, 
causing a transition into you to kind of better allow him to come through. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I mean, how did it feel when um, you were finally able to cross over? When, um, I remember that day in the garage, I grabbed your hand and I was like, okay, you know, you gotta go find your peace and happiness. And how did it feel when you actually finally saw the light? Saying that it kind of terrified him a little bit. Um, because, I mean, through his cycle, he does have a lot of like, he feels the need to analyze every aspect of his environment. You know, he doesn't necessarily immediately try something like, ooh, light, great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I swear. <laughs> um, he kind of has to really just figure out what it is. Um, and it was kind of terrifying. You know, every, as he kind of explores more and like each level that he goes into or each kind of experience that happens, um, since he's not able to thoroughly understand it, it scares him. Um, and I think that's kind of due to him wanting to start at zero. Was he kind of like allowed himself to release his familiarity with everything, um, so he doesn't know what to trust and what not to trust because he understands that there is good and there is bad, but he doesn't know what is what, and he doesn't allow himself to just assume, you mm -hmm. know. Because um, I feel like it has gotten him in trouble before, but as a human, um, just with people, you know. Um, so, it was terrifying, but at the same time, you know, he wouldn't be where he is now without it. Yeah. It was the detective in you. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, okay. And what was a really good lesson you learned once you had finally crossed over? I'm sure you learned a bunch, but... <laughs> basically you know things are not as they seem um he's understanding the fluidity of everything and how everything intertwines um and i think like an important lesson that i always valued was that there's good and bad and bad and good you know and i think he's able to really understand that better and understand that it's not really even about trusting his environment and thought it was, you know, it's more about just understanding it and accepting the positives of it and kind of running with that, you know? Just kind of, like, making the best out of the situation and understanding that, like, things will change and it's a really, like, complex answer and I'm trying to, like, break oh, it down. Um, but, yeah, like, things, things will change and that thing's set in, I don't know, basically there's, like, beauty in everything, you know? There's beauty in every little corner that yeah, you come across. Beautiful, actually. Um, that's, it's interesting. That was kind of the, the same lesson I had learned because I learned to not judge a book by its cover after, <laughs> you know, um, you had channeled him. And I was like, okay, even though all that creepy stuff was happening to me, it wasn't really like this horror movie poltergeist possession kind of thing. It yeah. was just, he was just trying to reach out to me. And so yeah. that was a really big lesson for me, too. So we both learned the same lesson. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying that basically as he, um, sorry, there's like cat hair all over my face and it keeps <laughs> oh, <no>. itching. <laughs> um, um, he's saying that as he kind of goes through each level and kind of keeps experiencing things, he's saying that every lesson that he's learned is basically still prevalent, but he has to apply it in different circumstances. So that's also something that he's learning. You know, there are lessons that, he has learned and he has accomplished and all that thing, all, uh, all, all that stuff. <laughs> but as he keeps going, you know, he kind of has to reapply it and reevaluate it and kind of understand how it applies to various kinds of, kinds of scenarios. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so do you have plans to reincarnate sometime soon? Um, that's not really his, uh, not in his cards you know that's not really what he's supposed to do um he held a position of power in a sense and he doesn't like that word it's not like i'm the ruler you know it's just he had he, he's a very powerful or a very energetic being you know um and he is a very pure being that was a very big part of just the way the universe works you know and with the different like kinds of spirits and entities and all that stuff um this whole experience was not something that he necessarily had to do. Um, but 
he knew that allow the universe's like pathway of like because it's constantly changing you know everything's fluid so it's like in order to allow that fluidity to keep going and to like add more to it Mm -hmm. um he had to undergo that experience and it's not necessarily he doesn't know you know maybe he might have to come back but uh for right now it won't happen for a while okay gotcha off topic, but I really love your hair, by the way. I just noticed oh, that you cut it super cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'll go back. <laughs> um, okay, and... Okay, so... So what do you do now that you've crossed over? Like, what do you do over there? What do you like to do? Right now... He's saying he kind of takes his study seriously. You know, he's still learning and he's still exploring. Um, so it's basically, you know, just to keep going. He's just trying to keep, um, he's just hungry to learn and he's hungry to um, transform in the way that he needs to. Um, he's very serious. You know, he's not one to just kind of like dilly dally. Like, you know, he's very focused on um, what he wants and what he needs to do. Um, cause it's not just dependent on his own like outcome, but it's dependent on everything else, you know, um, everybody affects everybody else. It's kind of like, you know, we're all one and everything somebody else does kind of, I don't know, all intertwines. Um, so he understands the importance of his journey. So he takes it very seriously. That's all. He's just trying to, um. You know, fulfill everything that he needs to for each little part of him that needs to be helped. And just keep evolving. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Um, how can the living and the and those who have crossed over be better connected? How do you feel that we can create a better connection with each other? I feel like in some situations, it's not supposed to be better. Um, when people are able to connect to those that have passed, you know, it kind of happens for a reason. Um, all he's basically saying is, you know, just to be open to new experiences. It can be scary, but just be open to just the weird things that happen, you know, and he's kind of just enforcing kind of the idea of basically like living your life through the eyes of a child, you know, um, when something crazy happens, you don't try to have a reason for it, you know, you just kind of accept it and like, oh, what if that's whatever, you know, so he's just saying to kind of have a, keep that childlike kind of, uh way of viewing things um because it better allows those moments when somebody is supposed to connect with somebody else to happen um more frequently and a little bit easier okay okay yeah got it um okay and um do you have any last messages um in general anything you want to say anything for humanity (laughs) <laughs> you know, he's like, you're all doomed. <laughs> he's <just joking. laughs> um, not really. I mean, he's saying, well, not really. And he's like five sentences after that. Um, <laughs> he, he's saying that in general, you know, we're all obviously starting to raise our frequency up. Um, and he's really proud of that. You know, he says that, there's still a long way for us to go um, as a collective, you know, but in general, like, he's proud of the, I don't know, so you guys are doing pretty good. (laughs) Okay. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, um, oh, we didn't even bring in Curtis! (laughs) I don't, sorry, Curtis, um, Curtis, is there anything you want to say? I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> God, my brain today. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. He's just like saying to add on to um, what the other spirit. He's saying Billy Bob Joe. That's obviously not correct. I don't know what that name is. But, so the one that choked you, that's, I guess, what he wants to be called <laughs> right now. Um, but Curtis is saying to add on to that. Uh, he recommends that everybody drinks more tea. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really random. I don't know. I mean, basically, <laughs> mm, it allows you to 
<laughs> I'm not sure. He's not explaining that. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to make this whole thing just kind of end a little weird. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. So, Curtis, you want to end it with everyone drinking more tea? <laughs> okay. Basically, he like, he wants... He kind of starts an idea to have me start talking, and then he, like, backs off. <laughs> like, I don't know what he wants to say. Um... I'm assuming he's, alright, he's basically saying that as a way to just kind of, like, uh, spend time in the moment. You know, when you have, like, a hot little cup of tea, you know, it's got to, like, blow on it. I don't know, we just take things slower, um, like, embrace the moment. <laughs> That's basically what he's trying to get at. Okay, like, stop and smell the roses, drink some tea. Yeah, exactly. Just hang. Yeah. Spend some time outside. Yeah. Swing on a swing. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay cool alrighty well this was a little bit shorter today but um that's that that actually works um because my other video is kind of long so this is actually good oh, cool. um, n any last words from either one Billy Bob Joe <laughs> <laughs> no okay he's like he's sallying out <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, well, thank you so much for showing up, Billy, Bob, Joe, and Curtis, thank you for showing up as well. I'm sorry, just mentioned you right now, I'm so sorry. But um, Amber, thanks again, always, always thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, alrighty, I will see you all again soon. Bye, thanks for watching.